are so happy to see everyone here for this evening. These kids have been working and digging into some of the important topics of today, and you're going to see some of that this evening. Um, my name is Miss Bailey Claire. I've been teaching here for 12 years. This is Mrs. Ronald Letty. Um, my name is Ms. Renaletti, and this is actually my first year being a full-time teacher in Greece. Um, I'm also an alumni from Greece, so it's wonderful to be able to come back and teach in my own district. Mm -hmm. So this is an exciting event for us. We see what our kids are capable of every day, and we're kind of showing off tonight. This is the show off. And the um, interesting part about our program, when the kids show up to our rooms, we tell them that technology is great but it's also pretty bad. And technology is responsible for a lot of great things that happen, and it's also responsible for some of the problems of the 21st century. So we start digging into those issues that affect our students every single day. And we talk a lot about engineering, and everybody cringes and thinks, oh, are you kidding? Engineering, it's so difficult. I, can't, I would never be an engineer. And then you start talking about their interests. What are you interested in? I like food. I like makeup, I like cars, I like cool sneakers, I like my clothes, and everything can turn right back full circle to an engineer. We call it the stealth profession because many of the people that utilize these, these objects every day have no idea who went into the design and the creation of these items. Thank you to our parents. Wow. I'm sure you went home and got an earful, or you just got a message tonight that you had to be here. I just heard from a parent at 528, she was told that she had to be here, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, our industry and higher ed partners, Next Robotics unfortunately had an emergency. He was here and then he had to leave, but they'll be back because we're going to be writing some grants for 21st century robotics in, in our middle school. We need to kick it up a notch. You're going to see some of our old robotic system, the Fisher Technics, and some of our models this evening for electronics. Um, we'd like to thank uh, Rihanna and Raffaella. Rihanna Brani and Raffaella tirelessly worked on the PowerPoint that you saw earlier, illuminating some of the projects in the engineering fields that they're attributed to and they worked every single day, so we want to thank them. We also have a mechanical engineering design team that came in and worked with students that needed that extra help and hands and uh, extra brains on the job. And I'm going to let Marisa take it over from here. So there's a couple of different um, things that we asked the students to focus on when they were coming up. Um, either my kids who came up with their own brand new innovations or Bailey Claire's kids who actually highlighted existing trans, uh, um, innovations. But we tended to ask the kids, the first question that we asked them when they came up with the innovation is what is your innovation solving? What problem is it solving and how is it making the world around you better? Um, beyond that, how is it positively and negatively impacting the community, the environment, and the people around it using the product? And last, of course, the whole reason why we're here, we asked the kids to relate their projects back to science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and by asking all these, the kids all these questions, once again, they were able to bring things back to engineering, um, and they were able to go through the entire design process um, in creating an innovation. One of the things I want to talk to you about tonight is how you can go from what you did this evening into doing that even more going forward. Why you should think about science, technology, engineering, and math, and I'm gonna complicate it a little bit. So I've got a little bit of a PowerPoint, but I'm gonna ask you some questions in between. So get ready to raise your hands and or shout. So one of the first things you should know is that you should be interested in STEM because STEM makes science fiction real. Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to all of the parents here. And think back to all those sci-fi movies that you used to watch when you were younger. And all of the things we have today, we don't have hover cars and we don't have jetpacks, but we have pretty much everything else. And one of the things I did was I went to the most authoritative source I could find on science research, which was BuzzFeed. And I did find that, you know, there are these science fiction technologies that are real, including, now here's the first chance, everyone has to raise their hand. Who knows anything about Harry Potter? Okay. All right. 
And do you know that at the University of Rochester, right, maybe 15 minutes from here, that they've actually created a cloak of invisibility. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. They've managed to make real something we thought was imaginary and at Hogwarts. And they've also made real other things we've seen, the self-driving car in Batman. We actually had at MCC the engineer from Google X, right, who uses Google as a search engine. Raise your hand. Yes. We have a guy who does all of the cool projects at Google, including the self-driving car. So within five years, you'll be able to sort of sit in your car and read your phone or read a book, always a good thing, right? Or watch your iPad while your car drives itself. And that was something we used to only see in movies. And so the first thing you should think about, why should you be excited about STEM? Is because STEM makes what we think of as only something in the movies real. That's the future. Now, who this summer has seen Age of Ultron? Who this summer has seen Jurassic World? Everything that you've seen in those movies, in movies like Tomorrowland, you could be the ones who turn that into reality. You could be the students who grow up to clone the dinosaurs, but hopefully not make Indominus Rex, right? You could make those cool gyro balls that they took through the field of the dinosaurs. You could make um, the machine that takes you back in time in Tomorrowland. You could do all of those things. You could make the Iron Man suit. That's what you could do in STEM. Also importantly, STEM creates, right? It unlocks your potential, it unlocks your creativity. When we add STEM with art and design, we get what we call today STEAM, right? I saw the Maker Fair folks were here today. The Maker Fair is all about creativity, right? It's all about thinking how you can create a different future than what you see today. That's exactly what you've done so far. That's what your projects say. And sadly, too many people across the globe think that they're not using their creativity. And a lot of folks don't even think of themselves as creative. But I'm willing to bet that if I were to ask all of the sixth and seventh graders here today, they would describe themselves as remarkably creative. They would describe themselves like the folks who took this global survey did, right? That creativity means to be resourceful, that they want to find solutions to problems, which was exactly the assignment that you were given and did so very well. That you want to do something and always do it better. Right? That's the creativity. That's the aspect of STEM that takes it to STEAM. It's that art. It's adding design. It's thinking with all sides of your brain, right? Not just one side. Also, and this maybe is more for your parents than for you at this point, but I would think if you're in sixth and seventh grade and you're like my kids, you have some concerns about money. STEM pays. When you look at the careers today at the highest pay threshold, whether you're talking about someone with a two-year degree from MCC or a four-year degree from RIT or a doctorate from the University of Rochester, it's science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. And you're already doing it. And it's the careers of the future. And so what I want to leave you with is the question, are you STEM? And what is your answer? Yes! Yes, you are, is the answer. Uh, and I'm very proud um, to be here to really partner um, with Reese Athena, partner with MCC, really with the intent to start to bring these innovations, start to bring these um, projects that you're working on to life. Not just in the sixth grade, not just in the seventh grade, but what does it mean and what are the opportunities for you all moving forward? So Dr. Press mentioned, are you STEM? And the answer is yes, right? So I want to, in the brief time that I have here, there's three things that I want to cover. I want to inform you, talk to you a little bit about Corning and where the opportunities lie ahead for you. I want to inspire you to continue your path towards STEM, and I want to challenge you, right? So I want to challenge you, and you'll hear it a couple of times with why. 
right? You hear me say why a couple of times, um, and we'll get back to that, right? I, I felt the energy in the room when I got here earlier today, and the energy continues to get amped up. Uh, and what I feel like singing is school's out for the summer. I won't do that, right? Because that'll get everybody in a tizzy. Um, but I appreciate the energy. And the reason why I asked about our lady STEM individuals is that there's a gap, right? Everybody in this room, our young men, our young women, there's a STEM gap, right? We don't just want you to pursue STEM. We need you to pursue STEM. Um, when you talk about some of the young ladies that go into STEM, 70% of young ladies are interested in STEM, but only 20% pursue it. So in order to get that number up higher than 20%, it's great individuals like Miss Bailey Clare helping you to pursue a career and understand what it means. Because there's tremendous opportunity right in your backyard about an hour and 45 minutes away. And I'm gonna to talk to you about some really cool things that we do and some things that you don't know that we do, but you're still engaging them. So that's our corporate headquarters right there. Uh, it's a beautiful shot. I took it uh, about two years ago. Uh, and believe it or not, those are our stars. This facility right here is called Sullivan Park. It is home to Corning's um, research facility. It is a two million square foot facility where we have over 2,000 employees and we have individuals from over 40 different countries. And I can say with confidence, we have some of the smartest scientists, engineers, mathematicians, technicians in the world, right in your backyard. Like I was at Corning, right? You go out there and you look at how people are looking at um, photovoltaic, solar cell phones. Um, unbreakable phones. Uh, there was a team that talked about um, lighting in dresses. So there it is, lighting in dresses, and now you have this really thin piece of fiber, fiber optics. And you could say, somebody had an idea here and said, wow, I wanna light up clothing. Well, here you are. What can you do with it? So yes, your STEM, continue it and keep that passion going. And there's a lot of cool things that we're doing um, at Corning that's right in your backyard. And I wanna to continue to educate you on that and inspire you to continue your STEM passion that you've shown here um, tonight. From the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed at night, you're interfacing with Corning technologies, whether you know it or not. By a show of hands, and only hands, please. In the last week, how many people rode in a car or rode on a bus? Keep your hands up, right? In the last week, how many people got on the internet? I heard this whole internet thing's really gonna take off someday. Surf the internet, sent a text message, got on Snapchat or any other cool app that's out there, right? Most of you, if not everybody, has their hand raised. You're interfacing with Corning Technologies, whether you know it or not. Our ceramic substrates that go into automobiles help reduce emissions, so it helps the world become a greener place. Um, our optical fiber, right, whether it's going to your home or to your school, allows you to surf the web, send text messages, and have people actually receive the messages. Our LCD technology, so if you have a flat screen TV at home, odds are, that's Corning Glass. So I wanna make sure you leave today with, there's a really cool company that's been around for a really long time that's doing some really cool things that's right in your backyard. And if you continue to, to, continue to pursue this STEM passion, the opportunity is out there.